I know I've been getting so many questions from men about fashion and it's not that I'm ignoring you. Please don't think that I'm ignoring you. It's just that I'm kind of drawing a blank. And it wasn't until I received a t-shirt in the mail that was the wrong size that I had an epiphany. So I'm going to do a DIY project. We're going to DIY a t-shirt that's going to be unisex. I know I did a DIY blazer over the summer with safety pins, but this is going to be a hell of a lot more invasive. And I hope that the method that I teach you does help you in the future DIY more pieces. So the t-shirt that I ordered from Romwe.com is this one. I really don't need to explain the purchase, so. <laughs> it was meant to be a baby doll tee, which is meant to be a fitted top. However, as you can see, it's a men's size, but this was a happy accident, and it was because of this happy accident that I had my epiphany and I thought death rock. And when you think of the death rock style, particularly any sort of t-shirt, that t-shirt is basically hanging on by a thread. It is within an inch of its life. The only thing that is completely intact is the name of the band. I'm not going to go to that extreme, and the reason that I'm going to kind of leave it a little bit, I'm not going to say subdued, we're going to shred the hell out of this thing, but the reason that I'm not going to go to, you know, the full extreme is because I'd like to send this t-shirt to one of my subscribers. And if you want to practice a little bit more, there's obviously, I want you to have a lot more space to do that. So the tactic that I'm going to employ to do this is something that many people will have different names for. You have the shred and weave, the braid, the laddering, whatever you want to call it. But this is a method that I used in my own shop when I ran an Etsy shop. It's now on hiatus. I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm also, if you're a man, you may or may not want to crop this tee. But since it's going to be unisex, I'm going to crop it. However, if you're a man, don't crop it. But these other methods that I'm going to show you will definitely work for a men's t-shirt. So before I completely talk myself into a friggin' oblivion, why don't we just get started? If you decide you're gonna crop your top, what you wanna do is mark where you're going to cut. I'm using a white eyeliner, and what I'm gonna do next is find my navel, because it is much better to cut not enough as opposed to too much, because if you cut too much, that's fabric you're not getting back. And if you want it shorter, you can always go back in later. Better safe than sorry, guys. Next thing we're gonna do is fold the top in half. So in order to get it as symmetrical as possible, we're gonna match up the side seams as well as the shoulder seams. So once you match up the shoulder seams, you're going to pull one sleeve through the other, as you can see, and then lie it down flat so that you can try and match up the side seams as much as you possibly can. And the reason that we're being so meticulous is because when you cut it, you want some semblance of symmetry going on here. Starting from the back of the top and just above the hem, what you want to do is cut in a slightly curved pattern upward toward the line that we created. Once you reach a side seam, then you're going to go straight right across. Whatever you do, leave it like this and do not unfold it. I'm going to break my own rule and unfold it just to show you the silhouette that's been created. Who knows, you might even like the way it is and decide you don't want to cut it at all. So, as you can see, we've basically created the mullet version of a t-shirt. It is all business in the front and party in the back. Or if you're of the dapper variety, it's like a tailcoat for a t-shirt. Now, if it is ass coverage that you require, well, you've come to the right place because I don't know what you got going on back there. On the back of the top, just below the neckband, you want to make the tiniest little snip. See? And since I got way ahead of myself and started cutting before I realized that the camera wasn't actually recording, I'll have to just sort of explain it to you. So what you want to do is you want to kind of go in a gradient. From the little tiny neck slip we've made, you want to go bigger and bigger, but ever slightly so, and work your way down toward the bottom. So as you can see, we've created many strips, and it has like a very kind of, think of a triangle. So, once you get to the part where it starts to curve, you want to follow that curve because what will end up happening is that you'll probably end up cutting a strip off. This also happens if the seams aren't aligned because you may be doing one thing on one side, but if the seams aren't aligned or something's not right, you'll end up cutting a strip entirely off. I've done it. It is the biggest pain in the ass. Okay, and there you have it. We are all done. Um, <laughs> nope, just kidding. We have a lot more to do. Flip your top over, and I want to create some side vents. So what you want to do is find out where you want those vents to be and pinch the fabric upward, and then you're going to create a fold from there. Like so. Okay. So we're going to start cutting. I think we're going to do a triangular pattern here. So 
we're gonna start from about here and then create a triangular pattern right down to the bottom. Oh, looks like I need these scissors. And so on and so on and so on. Okay. Next, you wanna pull the fabric tight, not too tight because you don't wanna rip the strips. It's still a little bit delicate. So what this does is it takes the raw edges and it curls them upward and it just looks a lot better. Same thing with the back. Now this one you're gonna find is a little bit more of a pain in the ass to do. So what I tend to do is I'll put the shirt on and I'll kind of stretch it out, but that is gonna look really ridiculous on camera. Oh look, there's my light behind me. So anyway, pull tight, not too tight. You don't wanna rip it. And again, what this does is it creates longer strips because you're also stretching the strips out, which is gonna create that drapey sort of effect. And it's gonna curl the edges up as well because I hate the look of the raw edges. I just like the look of it much better when it's curled up. And this is the way you're supposed to do it anyway. It's the law, I promise. As we're now about to weave, you really wanna find something to put the shirt onto the back of a chair, a piece of wood, cardboard, something. I've chosen the lid of a Tupperware container, which I've used for ritualistic sacrifices, as you can see from the remnants of dried blood. So I'm drawing attention here to the first loop that we create. Remember the tiny little snip? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the second strip down and then pull it through that first hole. Now you see how there's a loop hanging out of that hole? You're gonna take the next strip after that and pull it through that loop. Now through that loop, we're gonna pull the next strip down and so on and so on and so on. Only this time, nope, just kidding, same thing. Hopefully this view gives you a better idea of the method I'm trying to illustrate. As you're taking the strip from below, pulling it through, creating a loop, and then so on. Strip from below, creating a loop, pull it through, and so on and so on. Holy crap, that really does look like dried blood. Uh, this is where we see the idiot move in progress. You see that strip I'm about to cut? That is the last strip. That's not the strip that you're meant to cut. You're supposed to cut the second to last strip because when you cut the second to last strip, you tie it around the final strip. But no, I cut the last one and I've just realized what I've done. So here, we'll just sit for a while and watch me fumble like a friggin' idiot while I figure out how I'm going to fix this mess. And moving on. So the remedy I chose to go with was to take the cut strips and then coil it around the second to last strip and then tie it. Obviously, completing this on the other side as well. So I ran a shop doing this for years. I don't know what the heck I was thinking, but I did it regardless. So since this is a method that's new to me, I wasn't entirely sure how secure it would be. So just to be on the safe side, I double knotted it as I'm doing right here. So after double knotting it, what you're going to find is that you have little strips that are hanging off. Those are a little bit unsightly, so you're just going to want to snip them off. much for watching and I really hope you found this a little bit more helpful than confusing and don't forget to comment below if you want the shirt. Bye!